Hello, I hope that you're well. My name is George and I'm the Development Officer for Cubs and Steve Garden here at Oxford, England. This afternoon I'm joined by Roy McGee, who's club, though it's pioneered for one of a handful of boxing clubs that pretend APGE to training last summer when the national restrictions were lifted for brief period. Welcome, Roy, and thank you very much for joining me for this, this interview. Now, I just have a few short questions. I would like to ask you about all club safe return regular training test. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Can we start about finding a bit more about Night Pioneers? So, please, can you tell me about yourself? And the, and the background of, of the club. Yes, most certainly. Yeah, I'm pleased to do it as well. Um, as George says, my name is Roy McGee, and um, it all started uh, for me uh, way, way back. I've always been a sportsman all my life. Uh, uh, 12 years in the army, 23 years in the prison service, I run, jumped, done, done everything. Then I found got a bit older and I couldn't uh, actually do these things now and um, I worked for a, a charity in Norwich uh, running a social club for people with learning difficulties and um, I was asked to go to a, um, a meeting uh, where I saw a lady and a, her daughter playing this ball game so I swung in the step with them and uh, had a good chat with her um, and right down the line the, the lady passed away with with cancer and one thing or another and I've actually got her daughter now as one of my uh, Watcher England Academy uh, players but um, yeah I thought I could do something like this and um, so I went along to her club um, on a Thursday and um, helped out for a long while I joined um, as a coach for um, Special Olympics and the uh, i become a head coach for um, uh, Eastern Region then. And um, I thought, well, you know, I, I'd like to do this myself. So uh, I got in touch with a good friend of mine at Active Norfolk, uh, a young lady, Ellen. And uh, between us, well, with her help, um, we, um, we looked at starting a club between us because I used to help her doing bits and pieces when she put on things for all sorts of people. So um, I went to the University Sports Park and I got help there and a long story, <laughs> to cut a long story short, um, the Norwich Pioneers um, began and we began with, what was it, four, six, seven, seven athletes um, and now it's progressed and I have actually 32 on my books. But uh, now, everything is what's gone on and that sort of thing um my thursday night club the strollers i don't think will um will go back um i hope so i really hope so um but i also um i've got a club for the norwich association for the blind um visually impaired and i have uh, four athletes there so uh you know it's really really good and I'm a very excitable person mm. and I enjoy what I do. And um, as you know, George, I'm now a, a Botcher England coach, an academy coach and a referee. And I just can't wait to get back with you all. So that's my club, you know, and its background and everything else. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's great to hear how our World Cup has grown over the, the, the last few years. And it's helping mm. to see how passionate they are about the sport of boxing and how, how involved they are, are in this sport. And now we're moving on. Then you we went back to spending session for the end of last summer. Please continue to tell me how it went and what measures were put in place to ensure the safety of all the, all the members. Well, <laughs> Going back last last summer was 
really, really good. And I had a very good response as well. Um, and as regards to the measures I took, um, first off, when I was looking, you know, when things were looking a bit better on the news and things like that, I looked at um, uh, Botcha Scotland and um, I printed off that, uh, a load of stuff from there um, to read on. And then Botcha uh, UK and, and Botcha England put out guidelines and everything else. And I followed it to the letter of the law. And thanks to you guys, I did have guidance, you know, and I followed it everything. Um, and the measures I put in place to make them safe was thanks to yourself uh, and butchering and all the guidelines out and reading. <laughs> It made good bedtime reading, I can mm -hmm. tell you. And, and reading everything, the diagrams you sent me or sent out and everything else. And um, I mean, you've seen the photographs and everything else and how I got. And I have a, um, the club has a whole gymnasium with four badminton courts and uh, they actually play um, from either end, which you guys advise to start with. And I picked up on that. Um, so it really, really, really worked and ensure, you know, the safety measures and things like that. Um, I actually printed out, I, in fact, you were talking about the guidance and everything else, George, <laughs> that, that is only a quarter of it because I'm a, I'm a great believer in, um, paperwork, you know, yes, I have the phone, I have the computer and that sort of thing but now I've got to see it in black and white. So with the guidance I had, um, I printed out this, you know, Pioneers back to Boccia and uh, first, you know, on entering the sports park, for instance, follow all the guidance there. Uh, please note that Special Olympic athletes couldn't go back. It was under, you know, Boccia England, uh, the start and finish time. Um, and the, um, sorry about that, <laughs> uh, the club session, you know, where it's going to be and, you know, they had their own uh, guidance, you know, <laughs> you actually had to go out in the running track. And I, <laughs> I told my athletes that <laughs> once they got out in the running track to go run around the, uh, <laughs> the track once and then back mm -hmm. in the back door, which was a little porcupine. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I followed all the guidelines, all the safety measures. Um, I bought um, all the sterilizing stuff and that sort of thing. And um, before we actually went back, I went and spent two, two to three hours in the sports park where I keep all my uh, equipment. I'm allowed to keep all my equipment in, in a massive great box because um, I have a lot of equipment. And it took me that long to sterilize it all and everything else. Uh, and um, that was the way forward. And, uh, you know, I had no, no problems whatsoever. You know, so everything was in place. And when they turned up, they wore a mask. They, you know, social distancing. Um, the parents, um, if the two parents uh, turned up and they had to stay with the, the athlete, but I only let one parent stay. And but the, there's a, a balcony, and they, the other parent could go and sit up there and watch and things like that. So, uh, yeah, everything was safe and sound. Yeah, and I was very yeah. confident. And I find that if I'm confident, confident, and I'm enthusiastic, it rubs off on them. Yeah, that, that is really great to hear how it is by the, the guide and yeah. the way that, that, the way that was testing and how they made it run on the court. I think we've got. We, We've got a bit of it here. It's all to put on the on the screen now. Here we are on to the next question. How did the members of the old stuff feel about going back and the way that the sessions were delivered? Um so how did the members your club feel 
Well, as I said at the end of my last question, that the confidence from me, um, because I was having um, Zoom meetings most Mondays, Monday evenings uh, for an hour. Um, and in that, I um, slowly drip fed them all the information. And then we would have a quiz. We would have a just a conversation and everything else. And once we got back, I was able to explain to everybody um, the procedure. Um, my, um, my volunteers, my, uh, my assistant coach, um, happens to be my, um, my second son. And um, together with him and uh, two other um, assistants, I have several assistants and parents help me as well, but um, I was only limited. And the delivery of it, um, I actually, again, <laughs> as part of your guidance, you know, each court only had four athletes. Um, the whole the whole session was limited to 16 athletes. So I didn't have, you know, six on each court, which perhaps we could have done. But I looked at it this way. Boxes two and five was two metres apart. Two at one end, two at the other. And they stayed on that court all night. And then at the end of the uh, end of the session, which I have, they always play for a, a, a cup. Um, then we would discuss it, the volunteers would discuss it, who played the best and that sort of thing. And uh, I did have, I did have a little, a little competition on each court at one time, you know, but, you know, a simple diagram, you know, a simple yeah. diagram, let them know there. And also, again, the good old uh, risk assessment. So that was all in place and it was delivered by my volunteers in, in such a way they made it enjoyable. And they also, uh, they were able to do that little bit of coaching as well. So it would, instead of once, once a month, I had nothing but a coaching session. But now um, with this on, you know, my guys are actually coaching all the while. So the session was delivered in a safe way and an enjoyable way. Yeah, that, that's really good to hear that. That one of my really enjoyed doing that. And that didn't run into it. It's very funny. And, and I did not do that. I opened the bottling in COVID 19 specific risk assessment. It's available to download on the bottling in England. Back to box of web page on the bottling in website. And I'll be putting a link to that in the description box below. Anybody that would like to access that. Uh, I really want to answer this and I'll ask the question back. Did you, you have to come to anything prior to the session to be as well as the final members that it was safe to return? Did I do anything prior to the session? <laughs> um, Scrub all the equipment, as I said. <laughs> yeah, um, that was all done. Every everyone had all the information, um, and they had to tell me they were arriving as well. That's one thing I uh, have done this time as well. Um, they tell me because I can't have all thirty-two people turning up. Yeah. You know, it's just sixteen, and if um, if it increases, which it did increase then I had a roster system. So everyone had a, had a roster system and that sort of thing. So everything was in place. There was, you know, thanks to you guys again, I keep on about the guidelines and everything else. That was, that was the greatest to help, you know, so it was there, you know. It did, did it have much communication? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I had up to, I think one session, I had 12 last time. Uh, and it, uh, yeah, I think my lowest, my lowest amount last time was five. But whether it was five or 16, you know. Um, but um, they were, 
they were they were confident there were several of them that um phoned me up emailed me and everything else said well, i'm i'm not coming back because you know i am frightened yeah. you know which is understandable you know especially yeah. with people learning differently you know and i i just kept in contact with them yeah. all the time and reassured, reassured them you know and even now people are saying to me uh, or emailing me texting me and saying roy we'll be back on the 21st of june because they're getting more confident. Yeah, that, that, that is really good to hear that more and more people yeah. are starting to come back. As, as, you know. So now I back to England, we you know that this isn't going to be a perfectly screwed process for all our clubs. So can you tell me what time the event is you pay and returning to session and what do you do to overcome them? George, I think the biggest challenge has got to be the athlete themselves. Reassure them, get their confidence up, and um, making sure they know that everything is safe. I think that is the biggest challenge. Um, but I don't have, I don't have people in my club that do the wrong thing if that's the right words to use everyone gets there everyone sterilizes their hands there's plenty of stuff around and you know um but as long as they get confident enough i don't think there will be any challenges whatsoever whatever challenge presents itself then i shall act on it you know yeah. and uh, everyone everyone knows me um <laughs> I suppose with my upbringing and everything else and what I've done in my life, I tend to come across as, as quite strict in a way. You know, one of the things I, I've done in my past life as I was a scout leader for 32 years, um, and even that, you know, everything was safe. It had to be. So, you know, not a great... I don't see any challenges that's going to challenge me. If there is, I will overcome them. Yeah, and that, that's really good to hear. And I think for you, I know a lot of clubs, there'll be a, a learning process. This whole, this whole going back. They'll yeah. be, they'll, they'll learn from all the mistakes. And then that can find them next time. So that, that's really great to hear. I they haven't faced many, many challenges so far. And finally, yeah. What, what advice or tips would you give to every club of planning on returning to regular training sessions over the coming week? And yeah. The first part of the advice would be to read and understand and put all the guidelines into practice. It's essential you do all that. Um, always keep in contact with your athletes um, to encourage them, to reassure them that it's safe. It's always going to be safe. Something's going to be around for a long time yet, you know, and let's, let's hope, you know, we stay out of a lockdown, you know, and we, everyone uh, abides by the rules. Um, and when you get there, you know, reiterate all the time um, that you know they've got to keep safe and we can't have any anybody going down with it you know and and stop them with it so reassure everybody and have fun because that's what botcher is all about it's good competition and good fun yeah i think i think george uh, that's about it for now you know I, I just want to uh, in these weeks and months and everything else to get back and get back playing and fingers crossed we'll all be safe and happy that I think fingers crossed that that's that's been thanks my for me interesting responses there it's how nice it, it, all old kind of I've gone well so far and the members haven't really enjoyed being back in court 
and thank you all for watching the Cindy View at Home. I hope you have enjoyed it. If there's anything I can do for my colleagues at Abundant England can do to support the Royal Club with us, please return to regular training sessions and please do not hesitate to contact me on the details that are on the next slide. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Yeah, thank you.